in this section we will discuss salivary glands when we talked about all the parts uh, in buccal cavity we said buccal cavity is the opening or the cavity in which the mouth opens roof is made up of palate floor is made up of tongue and on two sides there are cheeks so we have talked about palate we have also discussed uh, everything about teeth types of teeth and structure of tooth and also about tongue now these glands the salivary glands they open into the buccal cavity there are three pairs of salivary glands let us draw a diagram to understand their location and then we will discuss these glands in a tabular form so that all the information is present in one uh, section if we draw this buccal cavity showing all its parts then this is the place where the ear would come so the first gland that is the first salivary gland parotid salivary gland so first is parotid salivary gland it is located beneath the ear lobe so our external ear just beneath it that gland is located so this is the place where we find the parotid salivary gland the opening of the salivary gland through a duct this gland opens again let me just draw this part the nasal passage palate and this is where we would have the jaw bone also so this is the place where the teeth would also be placed on the lower side there would be lung sorry tongue and the lower jaw now this gland opens with the help of a duct near the second molar of the upper jaw location beneath the ear lobe so in case of parotid salivary gland if we talk about the location the location is below ear lobe and this is the largest gland and the duct which opens is known as stenson's duct so here we will again write now the duct that is stenson's duct the second and we will write few more things about this the second gland is located at the jaw angle our lower jaw that is mandible it is angular at this side there is an angle angular bone so here is present the next gland so this next gland is sub mandibular or sub maxillary sub mandibular or sub maxillary this gland it also secretes its secretion with the help of a duct and that duct opens beneath the tongue near the lower incisors our lower jaw front teeth are incisors behind them in the buccal cavity it opens the duct is known as wharton's duct so the next gland is sub mandibular or sub maxillary gland location we write it as at jaw angle and the duct with which it pours its secretion is known as wharton's duct now the third gland 
The third gland is called sublingual and as the name tells us, it is beneath the tongue. So this gland, third gland is here, beneath the tongue. And its opening is also poured in the buccal cavity just beneath the tongue. So this gland is sublingual and the duct with which it pours its secretion is known as Bartholin gland or there is one more name. It is also known as duct of Rivinus. So these are the names given. So let us write down the third gland. I'm writing it here. The third gland is sublingual gland. Location? It is beneath the tongue. The duct with which the secretion is poured is known as Bartholin or duct of Rivinus. Few more important things about these glands. We have seen their location and the opening, the place where these ducts open. Parotid salivary gland, it is the largest salivary gland and sublingual is the smallest salivary gland. Let us come to the ducts. The first one, that is the duct of the parotid gland. The name is Stenson's duct. And where does it open? It opens below second molar of upper jaw. In the upper jaw, where the molars are, so just inside the second molar, this duct opens. Wharton's duct, it opens below tongue inside the lower incisors. That means in the lower jaw, just behind that those incisors, this opens. And this duct, it opens below tongue. So name of the duct is also important and the place where these ducts open, that is also very important. The next thing is, what are these glands made up of? That means which type of cells are they made up of? So here we are writing types of cells. Parotid salivary gland is predominantly made up of serous cells. And we will talk about the secretion also. The second one that is submaxillary and the third that is sublingual, they mainly have mucus cells. Mucus cells and here also mucus cells. So parotid salivary gland is made up of predominantly serous cells whereas the other two glands mainly have mucus cells. Secretion of serous cells, they contain enzymes, water mainly and the mucus cells obviously as the name tells us mucus they mainly secrete mucin. Here also mucin, mucus. Mostly the mucus is secreted by these two. And the enzyme which is present in our saliva plus watery content which is there. That comes from the parotid salivary gland. One more important thing about parotid salivary gland. Sometimes this gland gets infected and the infection of this salivary gland is known as mumps. So infection, normally these are viral infections, infection of parotid salivary gland is known as mumps. 
It is a painful condition when the glands get inflammated because of this infection. So, three pairs, the largest parotid just beneath the earlobe, the duct which with, with which they secrete the secretion is tensin, tensin's duct and it opens near the second molar of the upper jaw. Second gland, submandibular or submaxillary present at the jaw angle. The duct with which its secretion is poured, that duct is known as Wharton's duct and the opening is just behind the lower incisors and the smallest salivary gland, sublingual, beneath the tongue and the ducts open just beneath the tongue itself and the duct is known as Bartholin's or duct of Rubinus. Parotid is mainly made up of serous cells and other two mainly have mucous cells. Their secretion together is known as saliva. So let us now talk about the composition of saliva and a pH and what all things are there and what is the function of it. Saliva is the secretion of these three glands. So secretion of salivary glands is known as saliva. Now composition it mainly has water, enzymes. The most common enzyme or enzyme I think is the more appropriate because there is one main enzyme and that enzyme is salivary amylase. It is also known as tylen. Salivary amylase has another name that is tylen. Saliva also has salts, mucus or mucin, which is secreted mainly by the two glands, that is submaxillary and sublingual glands. And saliva also contains a bactericidal substance that is lysozyme. It is a bactericidal substance. It kills bacteria. So the composition of saliva, mainly water, enzyme, that is salivary amylase, because digestion of saliva starts in the buccal cavity in case of human beings, salts, mucus and lysozyme. Another important thing about saliva is its pH. The pH of saliva is slightly acidic. It is 6.8, slightly acidic. And the volume of saliva which is produced per day, about 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva is produced per day. This is the normal uh, volume that we are talking of. Now, when we talk of saliva, secretion of salivary glands, which is given, which has been given this term, there are animals in whose saliva, salivary amylase is not found. So this is something which is very unique. Salivary amylase is absent in saliva of Domestic herbivores like cows, buffaloes or cattle. Carnivores also like lions, tigers or dogs. We can say dog family and a cat family. They do not have salivary amylase. So this salivary amylase is absent in case of Domestic animals like cows, buffaloes, goats, sheep and in case of carnivores also. But salivary amylase is found in the saliva of pigs. Salivary amylase is found in saliva of pigs. So these are certain important and interesting things about saliva, salivary glands and uh, everything about it. 
This secretion is produced in the buccal cavity. Though the glands are not actually in the buccal cavity, but the openings are in the buccal cavity and the secretion gets poured in the buccal cavity. So three glands, largest is parotid salivary gland, smallest is sublingual and their secretions. Now, may, many a times we find that when we see good food or we smell good food, then our mouth gets watery. We say there is enough water produced in the mouth. Why exactly this happens? Because this is an anticipation that now that food is going to come into our buccal cavity. So the enzymes are already secreted. And which gland secretes it is parotid salivary gland. And we said parotid secretes enzymes as well as water. So that water comes into our mouth. And that is why we say watery mouth. So this is an, in anticipation that the food is going to come and the enzyme should be ready to start the breakdown of starch. Whereas when we see players on the ground, they keep spitting all the time. Reason, at that time the secretion, most of the secretion which is coming into the buccal cavity is of submandibular and sublingual. It is not of parotid because they are not smelling any food or there is no chance of food coming into the buccal cavity. So enzymes are not secreted in anticipation. Only two glands are pouring their secretion, which mainly is mucus. So that thick mucus, which keeps coming in the buccal cavity, that is what they keep spitting all the time. Important things that we have to remember is salivary amylase is absent in case of domestic animals like cows, buffalo, sheep, goats and carnivores. But it is found in the saliva of pigs. Human beings also have this salivary amylase. So we also have this uh, enzyme, salivary amylase, which acts on uh, starch or carbohydrate. This we will discuss again when we come to the process of digestion. So this is the buccal cavity part. We have completed all the things which are in buccal cavity. Now the next structure which we would be taking up is pharynx.